Now, according to Spock and uh, that well-known philosopher Captain Kirk, <laughs> space is the final frontier. So, if and when we get there, how are we paying to pay to get through it? That's the frontier, of course. Yes, well, in fact, we could use something like this. There we are. This is what we would use to uh, pay for anything in space, mm, apparently. Well, apparently. In another one of his 60 Seconds of Science, Brady Harron boldly goes to Leicester to speak to a boffin who may just have the answer. You know, someday in the not-too-distant future, our descendants are going to be travelling in space. And, if they're anything like my girlfriend, they're going to want to spend money. But apparently our money's no good for space flight. Discovery has cleared the tower. Normal coins like this would float around in zero G and they're, they're quite sharp edge and hard. So you could easily imagine them cutting into an astronaut if they were loose in, in the spacecraft. Well, normal cards like this chip and pin card wouldn't last very long in space because there's a lot of radiation flying around there. So Martin's helped design these. You can see they're really smooth and rounded so they can't injure anybody. This view from the International Space Station. It's a nice gimmick but surely this is something for the distant future. But now we have companies like Virgin Galactic who are going to fly people into space commercially in a very short period of time, maybe in less than 10 years. We actually might have commercial opportunities in space that require coins like these. You can see the coins at Leicester's National Space Centre. Brady Harron, East Midlands Today. Thanks, Brady. Uh, Susan Brand has sent us an email and it says, actually it's from John, who I think is her husband, why would we want to use money in space? There's no shops or pubs. And as my wife says, the pubs would have no atmosphere. Oh, because it's well, space. space is Very good, well. very good. Thank you. Moving on swiftly.